Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a while. Today we're going to take a look at the Glock 21. Magazine is empty. So is the chamber. All right, we got the Glock 21. We'll do three shots on the black dot over here on the left. Whew, it is so cold out here. Sides are a little off, we're shooting to the right. Got two touching and one up there. That's all gonna be me, because it is extremely cold and windy. You can see a blue trap out over. And I wanted to pair it up against the Rock Island 1911 slash 2011. Magazine is empty. So is the chamber. All right, we're gonna do three shots on the right with the Rock Island. You see, they're kind of all over the place, but chances are that's uh, just me. Because it is cold and windy as shit out here. We're gonna look at the similarities between these two guns. Uh, they're both big, heavy guns. The Rock Island is a little bit heavier, and it's got some. It's got its points, and so does the Glock. And we're gonna go through those points and check everything out. And I'll discuss this. And I do want you to let me know in the comments if I left anything out or something else you want to see with these guns because they're both, I think, phenomenal shooters. First, we'll take a look at the aftermarket parts availability. Now, you can buy Glock parts in pretty much every store. I think you can buy Glock magazines at the dollar store. I mean, they're freaking everywhere. Uh, the mags for the Rock Island are a little bit harder to find. This is a 2011 style magazine. It's a double stack 1911 mag, which is like, I, you never see them in a store hardly. Uh, I had to order these off of Classic Firearms to get uh, some extra mags for it because it only came with one mag. Now, the Glock 21 comes with three mags. Granted, they're plastic magazines and a lot cheaper to produce. As far as the price of the magazines, Glock 21 mags are about 30 bucks a piece. These were like $27, $28 on Classic Firearms plus tax, shipping, and, you know, whatever else. But as far as available parts, you can find usually Glock sites in pretty much any store. Any store that sells flashlights for guns is going to have something that will fit this and this because they both have TLR, TLR ones on them. I do have the HL on this. I've had this one forever. It was the first one I ever bought. Uh, it's kind of gotten floated around to different guns. All right, as far as maintenance goes, maintenance is easier on the Glock, hands down. It is way easier to field strip a Glock than it is to field strip a 1911. And some people may argue, say, I can get a 1911 down faster. That's cool, man, because I can't. I, you know, I could pull a Glock down, no problem at all. It's it's a part. That 1911, I'm going to have a spring flying across the room and someone's going to catch a bushing in the eye. Back together. Now, as far as triggers go, the Glock factory trigger is a Glock factory trigger. If you've shot one Glock, you've shot them all. You see, it's snap, short reset, and then snap again. Alright, now we'll look at the 1911 trigger. The Trigger on it has almost no play at all. It's got maybe 16th of an inch up and down travel. And as soon as you hit that, it's a crisp snap. Then the reset on it is the same. It's just nothing there and then break again. This has a way better trigger than a Glock. And it's, it should. It's a 1911. They are known for having pretty decent triggers. As far as weight goes, if you're going to carry either one of these guns, they're going to be inherently heavier than a nine millimeter just because the round is bigger and the gun is, has a larger frame on it so you're going to have more carry fatigue with a larger handgun the rock island does weigh a little bit more than the glock does but it's shooting them it's it's nominal it's you don't really feel the extra weight if anything i think it absorbs the recoil better than the glock and it's probably a smoother shooter now let's talk about dependability Dependability of both guns, uh, that's going to be relevant to the shooter and to the particular gun itself. I have not had any any issues 
out of this Glock at all. And I've got hundreds of rounds through this. I mean, it's you got some wear on it. Uh, yeah, I've not had any issues with my Glock at all, except for when I ran those clear, uh, I can't even remember the name of the company that makes them. I bought one of those clear uh, extended mags. It was that big for a PCC I was building. And yeah, that, that mag was garbage. I, it's the only malfunction I ever had. But uh, yeah, it's with the Glock mags, this thing runs perfectly. I've got a couple hundred rounds through this as well. I probably got close to a thousand rounds to my 21 because I've actually had it for quite a while. But this, I think I have maybe three, four hundred rounds through it, and it has not had one issue yet. I got it out of the box. It was oily. I took it and shot it. Uh, ran a hundred or so rounds and didn't clean it. Took it back out. Ran another hundred or two rounds through it. And then I finally brought it home, tore it down. It was kind of dirty. So I put some gun grease in it instead of oil because I've, it's, for whatever reason, metal on metal to me makes more sense to put grease instead of oil. Then I took it back out today and shot it. I think I put another, I think it's like 150 rounds I put through each one today. And it, yeah, it was flawless. It didn't, it was perfect. And as far as safety goes, um, the Glock has the trigger safety on it. It has a drop safety. It's, I mean, it is what it is. It's the Glock. It has no external safety on it. And if you want something with an external safety, you might want to carry a 1911 because it's got an external safety. This one has an ambi external safety, so you can work it from either hand, whether, whether you're right-handed or left-handed. But if you're going to carry a 1911 loaded, you got to carry it cocked and locked. So you got your hammer back and your safety on. That right there is how you carry a 1911 unless you want to rack the slide every single time me i think it's a little uh a little antiquated to carry but i do love this gun a lot i love taking this thing out and shooting it the grip on it is pretty big but it has this magwell on the bottom of it so when i get a good grip on this gun my hand pushes against that magwell and against that beaver tail and this thing just sets in my hand perfectly i love how this gun shoots the glock i put some handle it grips on it it's like a cheap version of the talon grips i won't buy them again because they're pretty hard they're not as pliable as the talon grips are but it doesn't squirm around too much it could be i think i'm gonna take these off and get some talon grips for it eventually but it's, yeah, it, this here handles just as well. The beaver tail is nice and, you know, it's, I mean, it's a Glock. If you shot one Glock, you shot them all pretty much. The groupings on both guns are about the same. Um, I'm not the world's greatest shooter. And from like 21 feet, today I was freezing when I tried to get some decent groups on it. Pretty much just loaded up all the mags I have for them and took them out and just let them go. Uh, I just wanted to see for checking for malfunctions and stuff, especially in the cold and wind. And I didn't have any issues at all. The only issues I had were me not being consistent shooting it because it was cold and I was kind of shivering. As far as capacity, they say these are 14 round mags. These are not 14 round mags. These are 13 round mags. If you get 14 rounds in here, you cannot put that in the gun. It will not, no matter how hard you hit it, it will not go in there. The only thing I really don't like about the 1911 is when you put that mag in, it's so flush to the base of it that sometimes it's hard to insert the mag because you have to pound that in there because that mag well is, as you can see, is pretty flush with that magazine. I might have to put a, a little pad on that or an extension just to help insert that mag better and also notice on mag changes the mags on the 19 on the uh, 1911 did not always drop free i had to help them a little bit the glock they all drop free it's as soon as i hit that mag release they're coming out but the rock island was a little slower to get the magazine out if the zombie apocalypse happened tomorrow and i had to carry a sidearm i would most definitely carry the glock it would be a close, close competitor with the Rock Island 1911. I know a lot of people bash Rock Islands. A lot of people bash 1911s. Hell, a lot of people bash clocks. But me personally, I've not had an issue with either one of these guns. And I do trust my life with that Glock. 
I almost trust my life with that Rock Island. It's just because I haven't had it very long. And I'm not, you know, I want to get it really dirty and see how she functions really dirty. And we'll, we'll do a video on this by itself eventually. When I get, you know, 900 or 1,000 rounds to it, we'll do a follow-up, see how it's still running. So if you like this video, subscribe, and we'll have more content coming out pretty much every week. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay safe, and let's take back our Second Amendment.